Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm here, as she said, I'm independent and, and I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. So I'm, I'm with Kafka and Spark all day, all days so I, I can, you know, be with, you know, all the nice tools. So today I'm going to show you Kafka Streams uh, versus, but it's not versus, it's just to compare two similar tools or something that you may find uh, very tricky to get right or uh, apply it properly to your use cases. So I'm going to introduce you to Kafka Streams and Spark Structured Streaming because both are streaming solutions on JVM. Both support Scala, so, you know, it's a good fit for our streaming use cases. So, and as I said, uh, you know, I call them, I consider them uh, modern stream processing frameworks but, and something I added uh, for this uh, presentation, no Apache Flink is ever mentioned during this talk, except this moment, okay? Sorry for this. Uh, uh, okay, so I'm Jacek Laskowski. Uh, welcome all to my talk. I'm independent, uh, IT specialist, only with uh, Spark, Kafka, Kafka Streams, uh, and obviously I need programming language, so I'm with Scala. I am not Scala guru. I consider myself kind of like uh, upper beginner, uh, at upper beginner level. So I can understand Scala. And these tools, Kafka and Spark, as you will see in a moment, uh, try to do their best to not force much Scala on me, OK? And I'm not saying uh, anything bad or, or good about Scala. It's just that I'm saying that they are not particularly focused on programming language, as you will see in a moment, uh, being Scala or something else. OK, so I'm doing development, others. You may have found me, uh, you, you may have uh, read a few, few of my books, uh, you know, internals of. Uh, uh, I had five books. Uh, two weeks ago, I decided to have a sixth one about Delta Lake, because somehow I got bored with all the stuff I saw already. So every time I'm with, you know, Spark or Kafka, I'm looking at the source code, and I'm describing what I see in ASCII doc slash markdown and I'm trying other tools too. Uh, I'm among the contributors. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I Confluent recognized my contributions to Kafka, and I'm part of this class in 2019, 2012, uh, 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 in this what they call Confluent Community Catalyst. Uh, I, I love the name because Catalyst is the underlying uh, engine of Spark SQL and Spark Structured Streaming 2 to execute all the stream queries. Okay, good. If you've got any questions, just drop me an email to this uh, uh, email address, uh, Jacek at Yapila.pl, or just uh, DM me on Twitter. It's open, so we can have this conversation later on. Exactly. I would have forgotten about this. So, ladies and gentlemen, picture time. Okay, got it. Okay, so. <sighs> We are speaking about streaming solutions on JVM using Scala as uh, the primary programming language. It's not to say that they are uh, focused on Scala again. Uh, we are uh, here at this conference, Scala Heavy Conference, so I'm uh, you know, repeating it over and over again, but I'm not saying they are Scala-focused or Scala-only uh, solutions. Both are streaming, uh, pro stream processing engines, okay? That's the reason why I'm, you know, offering you this talk, uh, because, you know, you might get confused. Uh, why should I be using this over that? And, and when, I, when one is better than the other. Uh, both, both provide something that's called high-level DSL, domain-specific language for streaming, okay? So I had a conversation with uh, Jacek about Jacek Kunitsky, who is speaker on this conference too, about Akka, Akka Streams, and he said something similar about Akka Streams, that you first describe your topology or your computation graph or, you know, uh, computation flow, and then you apply a runtime specification to just execute uh, uh, what you described using this uh, high-level DSL. Uh, it's sometimes called, oh, well, not sometimes. In Kafka Streams, it's called topology. In uh, Spark SQL or Spark Structured Streaming, it's called query plan. 
uh, in other solutions like Beam, uh, that's the only one. That's the only uh, moment I'm gonna mention this uh, uh, product, uh, this project, Beam or Dataflow, Google Dataflow. They call it Dataflow. Okay, and it all started f uh, from from this uh, Google paper uh, about data flow. Uh, and so yeah, they, they created uh, um, this, these two solutions. If you are not satisfied with what Kafka Streams and Spark Success Streaming offer out of the box using this high-level DSL, you wanna code more using your uh, you know beloved uh, uh, language called Scala. You can go deeper and use something uh, uh, that's that's clearly uh, um, expressed as uh, low-level API in Kafka streams. There is no such thing uh, truly or really in Spark Success Streaming, but yes, there is low-level API you can use, uh, but no one I met uh, uses this except uh, Spark developers, uh, you know, uh, um, heavy, heavy users of this, uh, you know, low-level features. Both have this distinction between what you, developer, describe using high-level or low-level APIs and execution plan. I call them logical and physical plans because they reflect uh, what I, uh, you know, saw uh, for so many years uh, looking at the source code of Apache Spark, and I can apply this theory, all this knowledge to Kafka Streams uh, uh, fairly well, and, and yeah, this, th that's exactly what matches uh, your experience with SQL databases uh, probably too. Uh, I'm sure that. Uh, uh, most of you uh, have heard about, you know, uh, query plans and that, that uh, once you execute your SQL uh, query, it goes through all the stages, all the optimization stages, until it doesn't even pretend to be what you started from. Okay, so you've got this logical what and executable how. Okay, this is the, the separation. And uh, again, uh, referring to my conversation with Jacek, I asked this question, uh, is there something, is this distinction visible or uh, noticeable in Akka Streams 2? And Jacek, uh, pardon, I'm quoting you again, said something like, there is this materializer, and this materializer you may have uh, used in Akka Streams is exactly what I uh, refer as executable how in Kafka Streams or Spark Success Streaming, okay? So I know almost nothing about uh, uh, Akka Streams uh, except, you know, some hello words, uh, but I remember something like materializer and I, I was always wondering, you know, why do I need this for? You know, I just described what I needed. Then, uh, you know, spending my, uh, more time with Kafka Streams and Spark, I realized it's important to just describe what you want, let this uh, process stream processing engines, you know, optimize what you want, and execute it uh, properly on the hardware, on the, on the devices uh, uh, you offer to this, uh, to this uh, processing flow. Any questions? No. Okay, so let me start with Kafka Streams first. Uh, we've got a couple of slides about Kafka Streams. First, then we uh, move on to uh, Spark Success Streaming. And it does not say, it does not, it, it, it's not meant to say that Kafka Streams is uh, better or worse than uh, what follows. It just, you know, uh, brand the mode, uh, so to speak. So, we've got Kafka Streams 2.3.1. Okay, this is the latest and greatest of uh, Kafka. And Kafka Streams is part of this Apache Kafka open source project. Just yesterday, I read an article uh, at Datanami, if I'm not mistaken, about KSQLDB, the, the brand new, uh, you know, hype from, uh, you know, uh, Apache Kafka, no, from Confluent. And they use this nice term to describe what they are offering to the public. So KSQL is not open source project, or KSQLDB, they call it a source, a source available product. Oh, and I love it. Uh, they just uh, say what they meant by uh, separating this uh, KSQLDB uh, repo from the official Apache Spark repo. So Kafka Streams is part of Apache Spark uh, source repository. So it's part of this Apache Software Foundation uh, uh, code base, okay? It's owned by you, by community. Uh, Kafka Streams supports two APIs, Java and Scala. And one 
one of the differences between Kafka streams and Spark Success Streaming, which may um, influence your decision whether to pick this versus the other, is that Java is the first main programming language for Kafka streams. Spark was added, contributed by Lightband, thank you Lightband, and they, 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 they uh, polish it, uh, no pun intended, um, and so they polish it and contribute it back to uh, Kafka, so it's now part of uh, Kafka streams. But remember, Java API is first, Scala API follows, okay? That means that the most feature-rich API is Java first, followed by Scala, okay? It's gonna be the opposite in uh, Spark Success Streaming. Kafka Streams, to my surprise, after years working with Spark, um, that needs you know, a separate clustering uh, uh, cluster manager, uh, Kafka Streams is just pure uh, yet another common line application, okay? You just need JVM and that's it. And what I like, what I loved about, what I enjoyed uh, um, exploring Kafka Streams, it showed me that by dockerizing your application, which you probably uh, are doing with your applications, by dockerizing your application and by running multiple uh, containers of the same image, you simply create something uh, like a swarm, like a cluster of applications, and that creates uh, something people, uh, you know, familiar with uh, Kafka, they, the, 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 these uh, uh, containers create a consumer group, one consumer group, and all the rules, uh, you know, apply uh, to this uh, bundle, okay? But it's as simple as saying, rather than uh, uh, launching just one container, of my application, I can launch three uh, containers of my application and have three node um, application deployment. That's, that's that easy, okay? You don't have to change anything to have multiple uh, machines working as part of your one single application. You don't have to code it. It's available out of the box. Uh, so high availability and fault tolerance is, uh, you know, available out of the box. Uh, same with creating consumer groups and all the goodies, uh, uh, pros and cons of, of using consumer groups to consume data from Apache Kafka. What may influence greatly your decision whether to pick Kafka Streams versus Spark Success Streaming is that Kafka Streams, to my, su to my surprise, supports one and only one Kafka cluster. What I mean by that? You cannot read data from one cluster and save data to another Kafka cluster. It's not possible. You have to use the very same Kafka cluster as an input and as an output. That's it, okay? That's different from what you will see with, uh, um, with uh, Spark Success Streaming. Spark Success Streaming doesn't care about, you know, what cluster you, clusters you use, okay, as an input and output. Okay, and what they, you know, promote, uh, Kafka Connect, yet another framework, part of uh, Apache Kafka project. Uh, Kafka Connect is, uh, is used to, you know, pump uh, data or, or dump data to uh, Kafka topics so Kafka streams can use it, okay? Uh, data abstractions, there are two, da well, there are many data abstractions, four, uh, or three, okay, four, uh, three, okay, three, three, here. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so there is this high level, uh, high level streams DSL with tables and streams, and there's this uh, concept of K global table, uh, something uh, that, that's uh, more sophisticated than this, you know, uh, ingredients like K stream and K, and K table. And that's for you. So rather than you create using Kafka producer and consumer APIs to build these abstractions uh, for your applications, you can just use Kafka streams and you will get this Kafka, uh, Kafka Streams K table and K Streams APIs or data abstractions uh, out of the box. That's the purpose of Kafka Streams. Give you something SQL-like or database, relational database-like, okay, to work with, okay? 
Sometimes it might be more expressive rather than, or more, more useful, more helpful uh, um, compared to thinking uh, topic-wise. OK, again, uh, you've got processor API. So if you are bored or, and you want to code more, or if you are not satisfied with what's offered uh, out of the box, you can just go deeper and use processor API to you know, express your needs. What was very surprising to me, and I was surprised, I love it, surprising, interesting, interested. That's the reference, right? So, what surprised me, uh, it was very surprising, was that this topology, this computational graph, sees just one and exactly one record at a time. It means there will be no empty cycles, something that's going to happen in uh, Sparks of the Swimming, uh, you will always have exactly one record being processed by your topology in Kafka Streams. Okay? So if your Kafka Streams application processes anything, it will process exactly one record at a time. Okay? It's different from what you can see in uh, Spark Lux Streaming, and perhaps I'm exaggerating uh, speaking about this uh, feature so, uh, so, so long, but to me it was kind of uh, uh, surprising, and it was def definitely something different uh, uh, to what I could see uh, in uh, Spark Lux Streaming. What also uh, is different from Spark Lux Streaming is that Kafka Streams uses RocksDB, local data storage, for state, for stateful computations, okay? So if you are employing, using stateful, uh, stateful uh, um, abstractions, uh, primitives, or I wanted to say primitives, uh, stateful primitives, uh, you will be dealing with uh, RocksDB under the covers uh, most of the time, except uh, um, in situation where you explicitly say you want to keep your state in memory. It's possible, but it will make recovery uh, slightly slower. Okay? Obviously, RocksDB pins you to this exact machine uh, because of the you know, key partitioning uh, in Kafka, so you need to be you know, extra careful uh, what you use for state store uh, in your application. Any questions? Yeah. They say I can explain tough topics uh, with ease, so you just prove it. Thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, they also said that I'm a good teacher, not necessarily a good developer. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, so Kafka Streams is ETL only, okay? No machine learning, uh, no fancy stuff for SQL. That, that's the reason why we have KSQL or KSQL DB these days. And machine learning, they say, they, whenever I say they, uh, speaking about Kafka Streams, I mean Confluent. Confluent says, it's possible to do machine learning, but hey, I'm pretty sure that you would not use uh, Kafka streams for machine learning or Kafka uh, for, for something uh, such sophisticated like uh, machine learning. You would go for something like Spark, for example. Not to say that Spark is better in all the use cases, but for machine learning, probably uh, the answer is yes. So no support for SQL or machine learning. And, and yeah, as I said, you've got this brand new shiny uh, tool uh, called uh, KSQLDB now. Kafka, what I liked about Kafka Streams after, you know, days, weeks, years with uh, Spark, uh, uh, and Spark support for Java 8 and Scala 2.11, is that Kafka Streams supports Java 11 and uh, higher. I'm speaking uh, specifically about Java 11 because it's long-term support. Uh, there is no point mentioning 12 or 13 because they disappear anytime, right? They, they've got no support. Uh, that's, that, that's at least my understanding. So uh, Scala to 12, yes, it is supported. And what I found uh, just to prepare for this uh, uh, conversation talk, uh, we've got, we'll be having or will have support for Scala 2.13 uh, um, in Kafka 2.4. It's already fixed, it's done, but Kafka 2.4 is not released yet, so, well, it's coming. Uh, 
Kafka Streams does not uh, come with uh, something as sophisticated as REPL. You may have uh, found useful in other programming languages uh, like uh, Scala or even Java. Um, you need to prepare this environment to uh, have this uh, ready for your fast learning and quick prototyping. Uh, it may be useful, uh, especially for consulting. Yeah, it's very useful. You just, uh, you know, code something quickly. You just uh, send your invoice. You leave this company. They called you uh, later on. You are not available. Uh, you know, and another consulting geek. And yeah, it, it's it's very nice. So uh, you've got rig join and aggregation support. It was before uh, Spark Success Streaming offered this, but since we've got this in Spark Success Streaming already, uh, since 2.3, well, this distinction between these two frameworks, uh, well, not frameworks, library, Kafka Streams library, while Spark is framework, uh, is not that uh, noticeable these days. Uh, Again, just to repeat, uh, Kafka Streams reads from the same Kafka, stream, uh, Kafka cluster. Uh, it's, gonna, it's, it's going to uh, dump or persist data too, and uses RocksDB under the covers for uh, persistent state storage. Okay, that's something different compared to Spark Success Streaming. And again, it's not to say that this is better than Spark Success Streaming. It's just to say about the differences uh, in the underlying uh, execution engines so you can pick uh, properly, better. This is topology expressed using uh, um, Scala, uh, the Scala DSL for Kafka Streams, and nothing to be discussed, right? It's just to say, oh, well, there is one thing you, you, will, prob you will surely hate. Streams Builder is a mutable uh, object instance, so all the changes you are applying to Builder uh, are to this particular instance of Stream Builder. There is no, uh, you know, creating a brand new object uh, um, every time you add uh, a new input or, or output. Uh, well, that, that's how it works, okay? That's Java, after all. So, uh, so Streams Builder mutates, uh, you know, uh, internal topology under the covers. You need to be extra careful with this especially after all these talks uh, at this uh, conference. Uh, so uh, builder, you create stream of strings and strings. So it means that uh, keys are of type string uh, or, and values, uh, uh, so are values. Uh, and this input is the source. And the source is nothing else but the topic you are reading data from, okay? But it's hidden by this abstraction called stream. And after, after the stream, you say you map values preserving keys, so you are not breaking, you know, a key distribution across, you know, all the partitions in Kafka. Uh, so no shuffle, uh, something you may have uh, heard in Spark. Uh, you map values and you're just creating, uh, you know, uppercase uh, uh, version of all the values. Uh, you could just apply any transformation uh, you liked. Uh, um, this is just uh, pure Scala. Okay, after all. And then you uppers to upper, which is another output top. This is another topic, output topic uh, this time. So you know that you have two uh, topics uh, that have to be available before starting this code. That's, that's important to know, something I haven't covered uh, on my slides. Before you start this application, you have to create these topics. Why? Because the number of partitions your topic uses will enforce number of threads this, uh, uh, this code will use for processing. So there has to be a way to describe how fast your application should be. And by fast, I mean how many threads, how many instances to use. And Kafka Streams uses partitions to say how many tasks or, you know, how many threads to create uh, for uh, processing this uh, input topics. I'm not precise, especially it's uh, recorded, it's in English, so I know that people at Confluent would uh, object because it's not that simple. There are some com uh, uh, properties that control number of threads. By default, there is only one thread that reads all the uh, partitions, but uh, the number of partitions is exactly the 
is exactly the max. Well, it's exactly. It's the maximum number of threads you may ever have in this uh, uh, application, and you know how, wh why, uh, because that's how uh, you know Kafka applications uh, work under the covers. And, and Kafka Streams uses a consumer API under the cover, so, well, there is no way to get better at this. And there is no point doing it. If you need a, a better parallelism, you just increase number of partitions. You usually don't do this uh, in production, but hey, you've got your, uh, you've you've got uh, you know opportunity uh, uh, to uh, apply these changes, and then you just uh, print to uh, standard output. Any questions about this code? At this point, nothing is up and running. I just described what I'm gonna uh, run once I launch this code, okay? And I didn't say deploy. I said launched because this is just pure command line application, okay? That's the description, this, this is the materializer. This is to say how I'm gonna materialize, how I'm gonna run this code, execute this code, okay? What cluster, what Kafka cluster I'm gonna use, you know? All the uh, execution properties, this is the description. Okay, to execute the previous code. I could share this description across all the you know, topologies. Yeah, that's possible. Eventually, I start this Kafka Streams instance. One instance, one topology. There is one-to-one -one relationship between topology and execution environment, and this execution environment is bound to topology by this Kafka Streams object, okay, instance. And I started all the daemon threads are up and running, they are processing uh, you know, the input, and then I need to just await uh, termination by other means, by, by, by you know, shutting down all the demon threads. Uh, but that's uh, what you may have uh, uh, seen in other frameworks uh, who utilize uh, demon threads for processing in background. Okay, yes, exactly. So first, pictures. So I've got new followers. Yes. Okay, and any questions? Thank you. That's exactly what I expected from the audience. You are very kind today. Je suis... Uh, you are going to spoil the moment with your question? Now, when I wanted to say je suis uh, très bien? <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> your question. I bar barely heard what you asked for. Uh, by the way, what's so, your name? Uh, I'm Nick. Okay, it's already recorded. Okay, um, go ahead. Yeah, how do you find the idea of uh, uh, spinning multiple Kafka streams topologies in the same JVM? Uh, I'm not talking about a single topology with multiple instances, but multiple topologies under the same JVM. What limitations do you see? What Problems. Okay, I had this conversation with Matthias and, and you know other people from you know uh, from this project, and they said uh, they, they 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 just uh, uh, said uh, expressed the same feelings I had uh, uh, for this conversation, which means I would not do this. Why? You would you would have multiple threads in one single application. If you want to increase number of threads for one topology and keep the, the number, the same number, or not the same, the, 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 you know, the, the old number for the other topologies, things would get highly complicated. So my take on it, um, I've got very limited experience, production experience. Uh, my enterprise customers don't want to uh, hire me as a developer just, just to introduce them to a hard topic and that's it. Uh, so my limited experience says that I would have one Docker image for one Kafka stream application, and by one Kafka stream application, I mean one topology and one deployment environment. Because it's so easy to just, you know, uh, change configuration for your Docker images, launch uh, whatever you like on your Kubernetes uh, cluster or whatever cluster you use uh, for managing, uh, uh, for orchestrating, managing uh, Docker images. So why would I do this? That, that would complicate my code, 
uh, that would, you know, uh, mix different uh, uh, business use cases, perhaps, too. So I would not do this. I would uh, highly discourage people, uh, or I would recommend not doing it, okay, if I may put it this way. So, so definitely uh, my take on it is, is to create, yeah, just one sing single Docker image for one application with one topology and one configuration. By the way, this configuration would be outside uh, uh, the code. Uh, I did this because it's easier to show on the slides, but it would be part of, you know, YAML or whatever you use to configure your Docker images. Yeah, th this is, as you said, this is how we do it. Like in my company, we have a single Docker instance per application, per topology. So but am I hired? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but the problem we are facing now is that we have too many of them. We have like a single Docker, is a single JVM, j just, to do, just to do something like very simple, like memory-wise, it's not very, okay, very so good if you want to have like... My take on it is like this. If you've got too many topologies, it looks like you've got too many customers who, want, who wanted this and who are paying for this, which is not that bad, right? So, so you're not wasting your development cycles and, and machines for something you don't like or you don't want. So, so I think that you created so many topologies because they were needed. And if they were needed, because there was customer demand for, for these topologies, uh, well, you need uh, you know, heavier, beefier machines to, to host them. So you need to charge more, which is not that bad either, right? <laughs> <laughs> so after all, it's all, uh, well, perhaps you may find some, some you know, uh, 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 code that you could share across topologies. Uh, but uh, simplicity wins most of the time. If I, if I, well, I, I'm not a DevOps guy or you know someone who is responsible for machines. So this is something I, I haven't experienced myself uh, before. So yeah, that, that, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, so Spark Success Streaming and uh, Spark Success Streaming is very similar in all the features I presented uh, um, that were part of Kafka Streams, but there are few, uh, ex uh, not exceptions, a uh, few differences, okay? And let's talk about them. So we've got, first difference is, is version, okay? So the current version is Apache Spark 244. They are working on 3.0, which is supposed to bring support for, uh, is it here? No, it's not here, it's not here. For a Scala, no, for Java 2.11, long-term support. So it's going to be uh, at, the, at the level of Java support as uh, Kafka Streams uh, offers these days. Uh, uh, Scala 2.12 is already supported by Spark. Uh, so uh, 2.4.2 uh, was the very first release with uh, Scala 2.12 support. Uh, now official builds are all with uh, Scala 2.12. Um, we've got stream processing APIs for languages like Scala, obvious choice. Java, okay, that, that, that's fine too. Python, and metaprogramming language, or uh, SQL. Okay, I said something uh, um, on, uh, uh, regarding SQL that I'm, I buy it. As we are all getting older, I appreciate the beauty and expressiveness of SQL these days. It's like, you know, rather than you know, coding another, you know, Hello World-like uh, application uh, again and again, just uh, what I was asked, uh, you know, a minute ago, you know, creating different topology for different use case, and the difference is pretty small. Why should I be doing this rather than expressing my needs using, uh, you know, uh, some, you know, high-level programming language like SQL? If it's possible, why not? And this is possible in Spark Access Streaming and KSQL DB uh, now too, where you can say, you know, uh, uh, create a uh, um, stream of data using SQL, apply all these transformations using SQL, and mix and match, you know, programming languages, uh, you know, where you see fit. Uh, meaning that uh, sometimes you may have code uh, written in Scala, sometimes in Java and SQL, and I know what you think. You should not be doing it. That's right, but if you are alone and you've got your deployment uh, on Friday, and today is Friday, 
you will do everything you can to have free weekend, correct? And go back on to this problem on Monday. And you may ask your coworker or coworkers for some help. And they would say, we are not with Scala. Sorry, I can't, we cannot help. But you are Java devs. You are, you are Python devs, right? Yes, we are. Can you help me? Oh yeah, we can help you. And yeah, it, it, it sounds scary, but to me it's like, you know, it, it's just life, okay? Sometimes you need to mix and match uh, whatever works and whatever could work. Uh, so, and, and, and uh, put it differently, Scala is the primary programming language for Spark. So the very first support for all the features uh, available in Spark such as streaming is first uh, uh, through Scala API. Then you've got Java and Python. Now, you are Python, Python sh uh, uh, development shop, okay? And you know Python, uh, you know, from the top, bottom to the top, and you are good at it. You want to use Spark such as streaming, but you are missing this one feature that's available in Scala. What you do? Well, you just ask people who can code it and who can create this abstraction for your Python code, write it, uh, to, to write it or to have it in Scala, leverage this uh, Scala feature or Scala-based feature and just use it until it's available in Python. That's what I would recommend uh, you and my clients. Okay, so that's exactly what I said by embracing the needs of, you know, uh, hardcore uh, software developers, uh, data engineers, and data scientists. They are different people, um, different needs. Uh, so, yeah, either we embrace it or, well, we lose them. So, uh, Spark such as streaming requires cluster manager for execution. So you need to have a separate cluster like Hadoop Yarn or Kubernetes if you want, uh, DCOS slash Apache Mesos, uh, uh, or Spark standalone. Yeah, they are the options you can deploy your Spark streaming application to. Uh, but again, you need a separate cluster. Well, one could say you needed a separate cluster for uh, Kafka streams too to deploy, you know, multiple Docker images. Well, it's not 100% true. You can run your Kafka stream uh, application just by executing, you know, uh, uh, Java application, Java minus jar and specifying your, your jar file of your, of this uh, uh, Kafka stream application without a need for anything sophisticated like uh, Kubernetes. So it's not possible with uh, Spark. And just to contradict myself, I say, yeah, it is possible if you've got uh, uh, multiple cores and you can uh, launch multiple threads with your local mode in Spark Success Streaming, but hmm, I would not recommend this. Anyway, okay. So, plenty of built in data sources. It's uh, something that uh, um, is different uh, compared to Kafka Streams, where Kafka Streams uses Kafka topics uh, only. Uh, uh, Spark Success Streaming uses Parquet uh, or file formats, uh, Kafka as a data source, uh, as an input and output, uh, Avro, JSON, CSV, ORC, Socket, uh, whatever. Y if you miss your data source, you can just build your own uh, data source uh, yourself by using this data source API v1. I would not be myself if, if I would not share this, disclose this, the data source API v1 is not for streaming. So I'm just a little bit cheating, lying, uh, okay, pick your favorite word for this. So yeah, it's a limited support for streaming data sources. Uh, but hey, you can just hack this. Okay, data abstraction, there is only one data abstraction for all the goodies. Uh, in Spark Success Streaming, it's just streaming data set. And it's exactly the same data abstraction you will have or you'll be using for SQL, Java, Scala, Python, whether you are dealing with uh, batch queries, batch queries or streaming queries, the same, the very same data abstraction, data, data set slash data frame. That's the beauty of this API and that, that's what confuses people a lot. You know, the simplicity, uh, you know, is often too much for people to, to embrace. It's, it's like, 
can I do streaming with data set? Yes, you can. Can I do pure good old batch processing with data frame, data set? Yes, you can too. Hmm, that's confusing. Okay. Anyway, that, that was meant to help you uh, use one abstraction for all the processing uh, uh, using Spark Access Streaming. And persistent state store, which is different from uh, Kafka Streams, uh, which uses uh, uh, RocksDB for persistent uh, data um, um, state uh, store. Uh, Spark Access Streaming uses HDFS or Hadoop DFS compliant file system like S3 or HDFS itself for storing, uh, for snapshotting state, for uh, write ahead logs, or for state in general. Okay, so you have to have something that's uh, uh, available from multiple threads, uh, shared like uh, you know S3, Amazon S3, or um, HDFS. Any questions about this? Okay, good. <sighs> With Spark Success Streaming, you've got ETL and machine learning out of the box, okay? Except, you know, machine learning algorithms you wanted to apply that were, that are not available or that are not part of uh, Spark Success Streaming or Spark ML Lib. But whatever is available in Spark ML Lib library can be applied to your uh, streaming queries or to your streams. Uh, it's something that's, that, that's different uh, compared to uh, Kafka streams that does not uh, offer uh, any bits, uh, you know, machine learning um, aware. Uh, so you've got ETL and machine learning. Uh, you've got uh, support for Java 8. Uh, Java 11 is coming, uh, so this uh, Spark 3.0 preview is already available. You can give it a shot. And, it's, uh, and it, this, uh, this version supports Java 11. You've got support for Scala 2.12. No mention about Scala 2.12. 13. There is an open ticket for this, uh, but it has open status. Uh, you know, no one wants to work on it, uh, or there is no plans to have it soon. Uh, you've got Spark Shell for fast learning and quick prototyping. So um, something you may have found quite useful, helpful in Scala, you know, this REPL, you've got this available in uh, Spark Success Streaming and Spark SQL and in Spark in, in, Spark in general uh, um, available. So you can just uh, build all your queries and run them as if they were part of your, you know, uh, regular uh, um, command line application. Uh, streaming joins. Uh, inner, left, right, outers are supported now since uh, uh, Spark 2.3. Uh, it was not available at uh, the very first moment when I presented this, uh, uh, these slides, uh, about a year or a year and a half ago. Uh, now it's gone, this distinction between uh, Spark Success Streaming and Kafka Streams. You've got uh, streaming uh, uh, aggregation and it's both stateless and stateful. And again, for stateful, stream aggregation, Spark uses HDFS compliant file system to keep state, okay, in multiple files. So um, there is more than this, uh, but this is a topic for, no pun intended, for another, um, for another presentation. Uh, you can read from one Kafka cluster and persist your data, your results, uh, to another Kafka cluster. Yeah, it's possible with Spark Success Streaming. So if you are thinking about multiple cluster, clusters, Kafka clusters, uh, you may use, uh, you have to use uh, Spark Success Streaming because Kafka Streams uh, uh, is not an option. Uh, provided you've got only two options, uh, Kafka and Spark Success Streaming. Uh, and uses uh, Hadoop File System API for you know, all the uh, state uh, management. Any questions? You're just proving my, my thoughts about how I'm teaching people, you know, how I can explain tough topics uh, with so much ease. Thank you so much. Okay, so this is uh, Spark Streams code. Uh, uh, I'm using this uh, Spark Streams because Akka Streams, Kafka Streams, so it was shorter and, um, you know, um, comparable to the other names. So this is Spark Success Streaming. And first, 10 minutes left? Yeah? It's okay? Or it's five minutes left? Ah, uh, five, okay. So that'd be one. 
Oh, OK, too. So uh, this is Spark Success Swimming. So I am describing my topology, but it's not topology per se. It's, it's like you are writing a code, and you say, hey, Spark, read stream from this input source. You may have thousands of Spark read stream lines in your code. All of them would describe inputs to your stream. You can then join or union them. Yes, it's possible. For this particular input point, I'm reading data from records from Kafka and from these topics, multiple topics. Uh, so if you create new topics of this, of this pattern, these topics will get processed by uh, uh, Spark Success Streaming uh, too, uh, after some time, after you know, all this metadata uh, arrive uh, to, to this code, or to this uh, runtime, code runtime, um, so to this application. So this data set represents all the records that are available in this topic, or topics. Then you say, hey, uh, take this data, this data set of records, and watermark it. Watermark is a way of uh, expressing uh, late records, or wh what's the meaning of late, lateness uh, for this uh, uh, stream. You group by, by event time, uh, and then you apply two aggregations at the same time. Collect list and collect list uh, by ID. So first collect list is by batches, and another collect list is by IDs, OK? So that's, again, description. It, it does not say anything about how to execute this code, because this execution uh, characteristic or metadata is going to be provided by, uh, um, this time, not code itself, by, but by Spark shell or Spark Submit Launcher, command line launcher, which is something that is different from Kafka Streams. In Kafka Streams, you need to describe your execution environment in the code or somehow uh, externalize, sorry for this word, externalize this configuration into configuration file that's going to be read at runtime or at deployment time uh, before your code is up and running. I with Spark, You've got Spark Submit com uh, Launcher that takes all the environmental uh, properties that describe your execution environment, like cluster manager, like number of uh, threads, number of machines, blah, blah, blah. And all these parameters are passed to your code without you having to code any line to deal with this configuration. OK? So it's, again, uh, the distinction or difference between uh, these two processing engines, OK? And I'm saying, OK, we've got input, we've got processing. Now we are, you know, saving this, writing this data out to this, uh, to this you know, sink. Uh, there is uh, there's going to be only one and exactly one sink in any topology or query plan, streaming query plan. And for this, it's a console. So I'm dumping all the records, processed records, to standard output. Because I can, OK? It's, it's good for uh, demo purposes. So I'm describing the, the, the processing uh, um, uh, by, by, by Scala code, but, not, uh, but I'm not saying anything about execution environment. And I will not, because this is something uh, uh, people responsible for deployment will do, OK? Are responsible for. And that's it, lads and gents. So thank you all. J'ai fini le présenté. I don't know how it's a presentation in French. I just present. Presentation. Oh, I like it. Yeah, it's like presentation, but in French, correct? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> j'ai fini, j'ai fini uh, le présentation. It's le, le or la? La. la. Ah, so it's uh, feminine. OK, so la présentation. Any, uh, qui va des questions? Oh. Uh, you know they speak Slovenian and not French. <laughs> you Slovenian? <laughs> not French? <laughs> oh, I apologize for this. OK, so let me switch to Slovenian, OK? OK, czy są jakieś pytania? Hey, 
see? <laughs> I can speak Slovenian. <laughs> OK, so any questions? No questions? No questions, really? There is a joke about this. OK, I'll tell you this. I've got one minute, right? So yeah, I know, I know. It, it was like this. One minute? Yeah, one minute. So there is this like this. I read an article about this moment where you are on stage and you ask this question, are there any questions? And you know how it is. You speak English. There are some problems with your English. I'm not speaking with John's English, my English. So you need to translate it. You need to come up with some questions, burning questions, and you've got plenty of questions, but this, at this moment, you are so under pressure, and you need to you know, combine all these thoughts together to, to come up with this one English-like question. And it takes time. So I read an article about waiting one minute before people come up with this one simple, single question. And there was a conference. I just applied this rule. And I said, hey, guys, I've got one minute to wait for your question. Do you have any questions? Every, everybody was silent, OK? I said, OK, I wait one minute. So I waited, I waited one minute. Can you guess what happened when, when, when one minute passed? Just second before, just second before this one minute was gone, there was, a, there was a person in this room who said, I've got a question. Just this moment, everybody laughed so loudly that this guy <laughs> said, no questions. <laughs> but, I, but I said, come on, say it. So we had this lovely conversation. Everybody liked it. And that's all. If you've got no questions, you can find me you know, outside, and I'll, I'll be pleased to, to answer all your questions. Thank you much. <laughs>